One of the most commonly asked questions that I get is why do I use Emacs? People want to know what's the number one reason that I choose Emacs over something like Vim? Well, I think there's a lot of advantages to Emacs, but if I had to narrow it down to the number one reason why I choose Emacs, it's for the built-in games. So what games are available inside Emacs? Well, let me switch over to my browser. And if I open up emacswiki.org, and they have a category called games on the Emacs wiki, and you can see they list a whole bunch of built-in games and amusements. So most of these programs should automatically be installed by default in Emacs. And then you have a section of add-on games. So these are third-party games that people have created that you can install, and I may install one or two of the add-on games, but I'm definitely gonna check out some of the built-in games. So let me go ahead and switch over to my desktop and let me go ahead and open up Doom Emacs. Doom Emacs is the distribution of Emacs that I use and I'm going to do Alt X Meta X on the keyboard and the command I'm going to run is Tetris because Tetris is one of the games that is installed by default and the evil key bindings do work in Tetris so H and L move left and right. If I do K, which should be up, but you can't move up in Tetris, so that actually just rotates the pieces. J, of course, moves down. So just use H, J, K, L, the Vim navigation keys. And honestly, Tetris works perfect in Emacs. Like I can waste, seriously, I can waste hours playing Tetris inside Emacs. And I'm actually pretty good at Tetris. Like I'm not a terrible Tetris player. I'm not saying I'm like the Tetris world champ, but you know, I, I can beat most people. Like if you wanted to put some money on a Tetris game, you'd probably lose it if you were playing against me. The next built-in game I want to show you, if I do Meta X and type the word Pong, and this does not use evil key bindings. What you have to do is do meta X and it will pause the game when you do meta X and type the command evil dash mode. What this does is it toggles evil mode on and off. It's on right now. If I toggle evil mode off, now the arrow keys will actually move. So now let me do pong dash resume. P would have done that. So now You've got left and right moves one set of paddles and up and down moves the other set. So you can actually play Pong against yourself. Uh, I'm not very good at Pong. While I'm pretty good at Tetris, you can see I'm really, really bad at Pong. And part of the problem is it's kind of weird using the arrow keys, you know, two arrow keys for one paddle and two arrow keys for the other. I'm sure I could map that to something else if I wanted to. Wow, that was a good save there. Let's see if I can get up here and save that one. Yeah, not bad. So that is Pong. The next game that I want to briefly check out, if I do Meta X and type Bubbles, this is Bubbles. And let's make sure that we turn off evil mode here as well inside Bubbles. If I navigate around, you see the uh, orange circles are actually Bubbles. And I can get rid of them, and I can get rid of all the Bubbles that are touching the one I'm currently on. I think if I just hit Space, yeah. And the trick here, is, I haven't played Bubbles too much, but I think the trick is to try to get rid of the Bubbles in as few moves as possible. So, uh, yeah, I'm not sure. Well, I say the orange was the Bubbles. Maybe the purple was the Bubbles because I can get rid of purple just as easy as I can get rid of. Yeah, I'm going to have to read the documentation on Bubbles. Another cool little fun thing you can do, you can do meta X and type the word doctor. And what is doctor? Think of doctor as a psychiatrist. So if I do space TB here inside Doom Max to toggle on big font mode so you guys can read what's going on. He says, I am the psychotherapist. Please describe your problems. Each time you're finished talking, type return twice. So please describe my problems. I am a Linux user is my problem and return twice. What makes you believe you are a Linux user? I use Arch, by the way. Maybe your life has something to do with this. Mm, you have a point. Is it because of your plans that you say I have a point? Yes. I see, well, are you sure that this is so? I don't know, dude. I am just really confused right now. I'm considering moving to Gentoo. Do you really think you're considering moving to Gentoo? No. I'm just venting. Perhaps the people you hang around with have something to do with this. <laughs> 
Another cool little animation thing that's built into Doom Max, at least, is if I do meta x animate dash birthday dash present. And let's animate a uh, birthday greeting for someone. Let's animate a birthday present for DT. And it's going to say, happy birthday, DT. You are my sunshine, my only sunshine. I'm awful sad that you've moved away. Let's talk together and love more deeply. Please bring back my sunshine to stay. Wow, you are sweet, Doomy Max. By the way, it's uh, uh, not my birthday. I actually had a birthday uh, last week, though. I turned 44 last week. Another cool thing you can do, let me open up a document. So I'm going to just open up my uh, doomconfig.org here. What I'm going to do is I'm going to go to a section here. So I'm going to select this region of text. And if I do meta x and I type the word studlify dash region, <laughs> what is studlify? Well, let's see what it does. It studlifies the text, meaning we get this random uppercase, lowercase uh, ridiculousness going on here. So that is a great way to take a, especially a rather large document that's actually formatted correctly and just really make it almost unreadable. Let me you to undo that. Another neat little thing you can do if you do meta X and you type zone and see what happens. The screen just when it's idle, when I'm not doing anything, what happens? <laughs> the text is kind of changing on its own. It's doing all kinds of weird stuff as long as this buffer is kind of idle. So that's a really neat effect if you're going to step away from the keyboard for a little bit, but you're going to have this document open on the screen. It's kind of like a almost like a screensaver kind of effect. It's like the Matrix. It's like C Matrix almost inside uh, Doom Emacs. So let's go ahead and try out one of the third party add-on games. If I go back to the Emacs wiki, one of the ones that immediately caught my eye because I was such a big fan of the old Pac-Man arcade games. There's one called pac Max. So what I'm going to do is let me go ahead and install this inside Doom Emacs. I've already got it installed, but let me show you guys how I installed it. If I do space period here to get into the uh, file manager, let me go to packages.el. And in my packages.el file for Doom Emacs, you can see I added package exclamation packmax to the packages.el. And then once you add that, and you do a colon W to write it and do space HRR inside Doom Emacs to reload your new Doom Emacs config. It should install the PacMax package for you and it should immediately be available for you to play. So let me do meta X and do PacMax uh, start. PacMax start. Now, before we do that, let's turn off evil mode because I know Pac Man is not going to uh, use the evil key binding. So I turned evil mode off first and then let's do PacMax start. And now it's going to use the arrow keys and let me go ahead and move around. Oh, this Pac-Man looks kind of funny. I wonder if it's because I toggled on big font mode. So let me turn on evil mode one more time. Let me do space T B and let's do turn off evil mode. And now let me do Pac-Man start. And now we fixed our font problems. And now let me go ahead. Yeah, this the game is running much smoothly now that I can actually see what I'm doing. So the very first screen here is kind of like the beginner, just so you guys can uh, see what's going on here. So it's just the four arrow keys. And then the next one, I should have a villain that I yeah, now I've actually got to <laughs> I've got to move around a little bit. I'm going to wait and get the uh, well, I was going to wait to get the blinking. <laughs> That he got me because I, I was trying to explain. Okay, okay, ghost, I got you. I got you, ghost. There you go. Okay, now you're running. Well, I guess I didn't need to eat the ghost to <laughs> to finish that. Wow, this and this ghost is smart. <laughs> like everywhere I go. <laughs> so that's Pac Max. And of course, there's dozens of other games you could actually install inside Emacs. I noticed they've got a 2048 game. There's a Tron game. Uh, there's a NetHack game. There's all kinds of stuff you can do inside Emacs. And this, to be honest, I was kind of joking when I said the built-in games were the biggest reason I use Emacs. Obviously, that's not the case. But I've got to admit, the built-in games are kind of a plus. I mean, Emacs is kind of like its own environment unto itself. It's almost like it's its own operating system. And what's one of the most fundamental core pieces of an operating system is the games, of course. 
Now, before I go, I need to thank a few special people. I need to thank the producers of the show, Devin, Gabe, James, Matt, Michael, Mitchell, Paul, Scott, Wes, Akami, Allen, Linux, Ninja, Chuck, Commander, Angry, Kurt, Dioka, David, Dylan, Gregory, Heiko, Casca, Lee, Max, and Mike, Nitrix, Erjan, Alexander, Peace, Arch, and Fedora, Polytech, Raver, Red Prophet, Steven, and Willie, these guys, they're my highest tiered patrons over on Patreon. Without these guys, this episode about Emacs games, it would not have been possible. The show is brought to you by each and every one of these ladies and gentlemen as well. All these names you're seeing on the screen right now, these are all my supporters over on Patreon because I don't have any corporate sponsors. I mean, what kind of corporate sponsor would sponsor a video about games inside Emacs? They wouldn't do it, right? You guys sponsor this stuff and if you like my work and want to help support me, please subscribe to DistroTube over on Patreon. Alright guys, peace. I wonder if Super Tux is available in Emacs.